Well, we have another challenging, maybe two hours, uh, our, our, at least our objective in terms of the end of the conference uh, was about 3.30. And it'll go by fast, I suspect, uh, because we are going to do the debrief. And uh, in terms of what is the outcome from each of the panels, Prior to doing that, along the way, certainly we've been asked, or I've certainly been asked, hard questions, which are good questions, <laughs> you know, from what's next, give us a sad one, you know, etc. okay? And I'd like to come back and set some context again, uh, if you'll know, allow me a few more minutes. Um, the first thing, just to cut to the quick, is that relative to the symposium, and sort of what we hope um, right off the bat, uh, if you want to call it an outcome. First and foremost, that you can leave today and what you've been engaged with and been a part of, you walk away that it's something you can use in the work that you're doing. Wonderful. You know, that's on the front burner. And at some level, that's a success, at least in my mind, to the symposium. Because why are you going to impose on people's time, ask them to commit more, but the fact that add to their additional commitments, and then have, have them go and be in this plea. And so that's number one, that you can walk away, and some of what you picked up in the last day and a half, it will help in the work that you do. The second is that we can walk away with the idea that moving forward, there are some things that we can do together to build for this. So at a very basic level, those are the two outcomes, at least as symposium uh, partners, we hope that we can achieve. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that. The second thing, and, uh, all I need to do is get you mad at us or at me at the end of the day. And there were a few things that I debated about saying at the beginning, uh, just what I would call sort of caveats or declarations. Right? Because at times, in having this kind of a forum where you're, you know, you're kind of looking at one another, you've got different perspectives on a variety of issues and how to do it, what to do, you know, where to put our focus, where to put our priorities, etc. And sometimes we get into some traps, but I, but I think that they're still maybe applicable. So forgive me if, if maybe I should have did it at the beginning, or maybe I, after you hear them, I shouldn't have said them at all. Okay? And uh, didn't need to be said. So I'll take ownership of that. The first, and I'm just going to read them because I had them down. The symposium was, is not a, sig a signal. Signal. Uh, to signal a reliance on public policies and programs for strengthening Latino families, nor to exclude the private sector engagement toward increasing economic mobility. So there's nothing here that said we're not going to engage the private sector, ¿verdad? or that we're going to be reliant because people tend to want to interpret, I have a la raza, they just want more programs, right? You know, here comes the four. And, and, and none of this is farther from the truth. You know, at some level you could say, this is just democracy at work. You know, we want responsive public policies because you know they affect our lives. So, the, the, you know, so I just want to mention that. And, and I think some of that, and it's depending on the group we were in, maybe housing, uh, labor employment a little bit more than in education and healthy human services, where the private sector probably gets more engaged where you want more partnerships with public policies, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not exclusive of healthy human services or education because of the issues that's going on in education. So I just kind of want to mention that in no way do we propose to be reliant quote on quote unquote on public policy. You know? uh, and the second one is because the symposium is explicitly a Latino agenda does not preclude alliances with non-Latinos or working with other political parties, or all political parties, okay? However, it does suggest 
that sometimes we engage with partners unprepared because we don't have our stuff together. All right? And even at a, at a basic level, if I can just to say one story in this, in this, or this point, you know, when I had the policy center, the, the Fed Policy Research and Education Center, which, by the way, our parent organization, the Centro de Salud Familiar La Fe and La Paso, it's been there for 65 years, and and really was engaged a lot more than in the past, maybe in Austin, and got together with different groups, you know. Now I remember the first meeting with a group of maybe 50 progressive organizations, uh, not 50 individuals from different progressive organizations, primarily non-Latino, except if there was only four or five, okay? And I put on the table in a conversation on Medicaid, hey, I want to take 500 million of the 200, of the 2 billion biennium budget for Medicaid and to put it into primary care, okay? Shift some of that money. And I almost got benched, okay? Uh, and within two hours, I was driving back to Austin, and we had a lot head of the ARP, Juan, what are you doing taking away money for the elderly? Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, you know, I'm not taking any money away from the elderly. I can't help it if you folks are older than Latinos, demographically, <laughs> right? We are young families, you know, we need access to regular primary care. You know, we don't necessarily, so even though we spend two, you know, two thirds of our Medicaid budget on seniors. Now, seniors, we have some seniors that in nursing homes and blah, 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 but maybe not in proportion, right? So you see my point, so, but I, and I knew the response was gonna be, I just wanted to make it clear that we're on the same page about redoing something to Medicaid and not allowing the state to create more barriers within the program but we also have a fundamental difference, okay? Because it was my way of saying, if I'm gonna support you on these progressive causes, are you ready to put add another 500 million on top of the two billion? You see my point? So that's what I mean that it's not about not wanting to create alliances. Of course we wanna create alliances with non-Latinos, other organizations, okay? The business sectors and so on and so forth. But I'm just saying, sometimes we're just not ready, okay? Because when you get into that room with other groups to negotiate the policy positions, you and I know that's not easy, right? Even among ourselves prior to when we get to the legislative session. And that's all I'm saying by that. Do we have our own agenda and our own data, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And any one of the issues that we're concerned with, that's, that's a question. Uh, the last one you kind of heard, uh, you did hear yesterday when I said that you know, there's Chicanos in the room, Mexican Americans, and Latinos, and, 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 and it doesn't matter the label we feel and feel more comfortable with. In one sense, it matters to us individually, maybe, but in the context of that, we're also in, into different generational perspectives and how we view that, uh, how we view the world without from our personal experiences, where we grew up. You know, because growing up in the Valley, it's not that in a Chupan El Paso, or Plainview, Texas, or Tyler as a Latino or Houston. So we may have experienced the same things, but I think we just need to kind of respect that. But the question is, is how do our ideas and our experience, you know, how do we fit them together into some kind of strategy that makes sense for our community as a whole? And, and that's easier said than done. I know that, you know that. The, the last one was, let's not let our observations or perspectives regarding money political power or risk be self-imposed barriers to creative and constructive discussions. That one I probably should have said at the beginning. I know that I'm only nail, so we're screwed. You know, come on, look at how much we've accomplished in the last, you know, five, six decades, you know, since 1920, you know, in terms of just making some progress for that. And I know we're gonna make more. But I just wanted to but it's often difficult because we put these self-imposed barriers for that. And, and sometimes, because we get frustrated right now, who's got the control of the legislature and we, what is it gonna do with it? But well, we're here, so I know we're gonna to wanna to do something. For that. And, and the battles are not necessarily all there because someone may point it out, you know, you got, maybe the real groundwork we need to do is at the local level, but not because we might have greater control and power at the local level, city by city, and then move on to the state, right? 
And so again, I, I just wanted to mention that. I think that the the other thing, as far as and we'll get closer to as we, as we agree, relative to uh, accomplishments, you know, in your in your binder. I know you probably didn't have a chance to read them, but there were uh, the intent to provide a sampling of what I think is certainly some good work that's been done. I think I alluded to among healthy human services, housing, and education, and labor and employment, if we talk about a strategic effort to put an agenda forward from a Latino lens in any of these areas, each of those areas have some uh, level of accomplishment, maybe, but relative to something that's actually there as a, maybe a strategy or closer to it, it's probably education. You know, if you look at education, we do have a Texas Latino Education Coalition. We do have folk for uh, organized for political action that has been very involved with them. We do have a certain level of local or statewide representation of Latinos in different disciplines, by the way, not just grassroots, but educators, uh, folks who are involved in litigation. So by comparison, and there is a document that's in there that I know that that group worked with as a maybe a little a beginning, but, uh, but I, there's not a similar thing in healthy human services. So we're not as comparatively speaking as far as head with those set of issues, and maybe even in housing or legal employment as we are with education, okay? Uh, so I, I just want to mention that there, there are some things and some assets, if you will, in there that we can build from. And, and there's another document in education in there that came, uh, uh, Education First, that's in the binder. An excellent piece of work that looks at it from a certain perspective that should tie in well to, I think, hopefully we tied in well, that they probably maybe had some of that in the discussions in terms of thinking about strategies, in terms of how do we gain the influence to make some education policy changes in the direction, some of which are there, maybe some new ones that came up in the conversation, but moving forward. Right? And so there are pieces there. And so I, I just wanted to mention, the, West, the other document, uh, that's there is uh, it's uh, called Strong Families and Child Children's Future Blueprint, and it, it, it basically a, a, a it's more like a template that tries to convey at least the, the advocacy behind that that I'm, I'm 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 advocating for at least from my perspective is that we try to frame our our policy strategies short and long term from the, spend, the standpoint of Latino families. How do we strengthen Latino families in ways that they can gain economic mobility? Okay, because if, if each of us have a dream, my dream is that I will never have a single Latino family have to have TANF, Medicaid, you know, food stamps. Why? Because economically, they don't need to do that. Now that doesn't mean that we don't need a set in that for them, but if I have sueños, it's the sueños that we, you know, we're an empowered, strong families and we have those resources, right? So, and that might be nothing that I'll achieve in my lifetime, but it doesn't, you know, so I'm just saying the framework of a family, because you can certainly tie in education to how that strengthens family. You can certainly tie, you know, again, employment. You can certainly tie housing, right? that they all contribute in one way or another to economic mobility. Because if I have access to health insurance, right? and, and I don't have to risk that if I get sick and I'm, I'm not able to get employed. So there's a lot of arguments can be made into the idea of strengthening a familia. And my argument to you is, if we're about familia, then maybe that's maybe the top frame, and then we have these components. And that's not usually exclusive that each of those areas have a strategy. Right? So, you know, I try to throw in there, how can we kind of 
do a strategic mapping where we bring in the different components with the kinds of policies we want as outcomes out of these, in these areas. Notwithstanding the reality that we, I know you've discussed that we're going to get into the debriefing of how do we get it done. But I still back to one central message, our question. Where is our plan? Where is our state plan that even that we get people to sign on year by year, that this is the direction we want to head that helps strengthen our families in all of these areas. And multiple Latino organizations have signed on to it, okay? Non-Latino organizations have signed on to it because we brokered it, you know, with different sectors. And that might take us five years, ten years, okay? And some elements of that plan, you know, we it may be more short-term than we get other elements to buy into it. For that then maybe more long-term strategies. So I don't know if that makes any sense. But the basic idea of that is just think, to think how can we possibly bring together a statewide strategic plan, you know, for strengthening Latino families. Now, if folks want to argue, we call it something else, that's okay, you know, that's that's not up to me. I'm just, just like, it's just a, a, a idea of supposed to be food for thought for that. And so, all of that said, you know, from the standpoint, as best I can answer the questions that people were asking, uh, what is going to come from this today? So the short answer is we're going to take the product of what we discuss on the debriefing, and I, like I said, the presentation, etc., and and see what we can mesh together as a, a. I'll go ahead and just right now call it an action plan, we may decide to give it a different title, but some kind of strategic plan right, that incorporates these and in a way that makes sense and is logical and is meaningful. And then I want to give it back to each and every person in the room. We're going to give it back to each and every person, give you some time to review it and say, is this kind of what you think we said and how do you feel about what it with this plan. In other words, will you write off on it, so to speak? Because you were here, okay? And so that is a sort of capture of those things and, and to the extent that after a given amount of time, you know, and, and so it becomes a product of some level and yet it's not a finished product, it's a working plan, but that that is that it's of a quality, at least a, a sufficient quality that not only do we give it to you, but or we would, do we share it with others right? that we want to build from it and what we might some, somehow tie into it in terms of doing something next year or whenever, I'm not sure, but I'm just saying as an immediate product, the idea is to come up with this sort of a working document from the symposium that in and of itself will have value. The other piece that's a little more difficult is because that, that piece might be more strategic in nature and, and you might not feel that, well, it doesn't help me today with this issue. But the other part was depending on you know, each of the groups, like if, if there's some things that come out of education, because they may be a little bit more further ahead, that the content of that, along with different pieces, might feed into having developing a good uh, sort of strategic uh, sub, like a brief, you know, that's a, that might have a utility for advocacy or for whatever, I'm not sure that. But the main thing as far as an immediate it was that. And on the, the final question of, well, what can we do next? You know, what's next? Well, I, I'm not going to say anything that right now until we have the debriefing and we're going to have to answer that question, you know. Because uh, I'm just responding to from the work that's been done here, from the time investment, in terms of something on paper to get back to folks, this is what we're going to get back to you and see what you think. And whether or not that document can work in a way that we can build on. And so I'm not making any presumptions about that, because otherwise I'd be lying to you. Um, so I don't know if that helps a little bit. Uh, in, uh, but I'd like to go ahead and, and go into the having each of the facilitators and, and I. I need to, I don't want to leave in case I forget, 
y los Lina Moreno, los Amelia Murillo, ¿verdad? José Garza, and Eva Lopez, you know, for taking on the task of facilitator, because I know it's hard, okay? And, and the group dynamics, you know, has a way of coming to life on its own. And uh, so, muchas gracias a ellos for doing that for us. And so I'm gonna ask, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, start, you know, let's start with housing, uh, and uh, and then work back from that, and then and then after housing, you know, if we could do healthy human services, and then uh, labor and employment, and education, and I'm going to ask them to take, you know, 15, not more than 20 minutes, to summarize the outcome uh, from their discussions. And the they each had a facilitator's guide, by the way, that was given to them, you know, a month before or whatever, uh, somewhere around that time to kind of help, you know, toward the four key areas. What are, generally speaking, what are the key, uh, some of the key issues for us? And even though we can make a long list and people already felt they knew what they were, nonetheless, what are the kinds of policies that would be responsive to those issues to improve our community in those areas? Uh, either that exist or don't exist, and we want to see happen. Uh, but then the real hard one, the real hard one, as you know, is what capacity do we have to make that happen? Okay, and that, again, when we talked earlier, the whole idea of what is our organizing capacity uh, to collaborate and move that agenda policy-wise and get it approved, if you will, uh, as, a, as an example, you know, what is our policy development capacity that either we have now or don't have and need to build to better support the data analysis, etc., to get those things done, and then the communications in terms of the messaging and a message to different audiences, not just Latino, but not across the board, because you know we've got to do different messaging to different audiences. So it's again relative to what is our strength to get this achieved. And not only lastly, in terms of the group in this room, but how do we broaden that for that outside of the group, uh, or do something else as a follow -up. So that was kind of the general guide uh, for the facilitators to use. And, and that's what I'm saying, it was a very challenging thing. Uh, and I'm sure it can be frustrating. Some of you probably even got frustrated. But that's part of the process. I'm sorry, but I see it, you know. And uh, so, so with that said, what did I say first? I said, Professor Lowe. Eva. 